Hey guys, welcome back. So today we came out to the range to play around with one of the rifles in my collection, just to have some fun and show you guys kind of an oddity from history. This is a Finnish made M82 bullpup. It's based on the M76 AK type rifle that Finland produced uh, for its own military. Um, you know, they, they adopted as the RK62 and we'll show that rifle in a later video, but this was made primarily for commercial purposes, although Wikipedia, and we all know how accurate Wikipedia can be, claims that some of these were even tried by paratroopers uh, and, and the gun was found to be unsuitable, which I would agree with, the gun's unsuitable for military use. This is a civilian plinker and about 2,000 of these things were produced between 1986 and right around, yeah, 1978 to 1986. About 2,000 of them were produced. So it, it was an extremely popular design. But what they've done is taken that M76 556 AK action and stuck it in a really cheap chintzy stock. We're going to shoot it this afternoon, talk about some of its quirkiness, show you this cool piece of history from the 80s. I remember these, actually a friend of mine owned one of these when I was in high school. So this isn't, you know, the first time I've had the opportunity to shoot one as an adult. I actually shot one of these things decades ago uh, after my buddy picked it up at a gun show. But we'll talk about some of the weird features of the gun and shoot it for you here. So the first magazine I'm going to put through it. This is a 30 round magazine. This is a Valmet magazine and these things are as rare as hen's teeth. This magazine by itself will probably fetch three to four hundred dollars on Gunbroker if you can find one. For whatever reason Valmets came into the country uh, fairly readily but the magazines are really really hard to find. So as you can see I put the magazine into the gun just like any other bullpup. It's a rock and locker because it is an AK and now my charging handle is right here pull to the rear, let it go. Safety is right there, has this big knob on it. So you have a, a safety, which is just really a little pin that's coming off the AK uh, lever that's just hidden beneath the fiberglass chassis. And now the gun's ready to shoot. The sights are offset from the center of bore. It's about one and a quarter inches offset from the center of bore. And so this gun is definitely set up for right-handed shooters. If you're a left-handed shooter, you're gonna have this charging handle whacking you in the face and you're not gonna have a very good sight picture because the sights are hanging off the left side of the gun. All right, let's fire off these first 30 rounds. And there you go, 30 rounds fired. This is my M76, which is just a more conventional AK rifle. The M76 is a very cool gun that was imported in the 80s again, and it is based on the AK. Now you'll notice that this M76 looks an awful lot like the Galil from Israel, and that's because the Galil borrowed very heavily from this finished designed rifle. The 7.62 by 39 version of this rifle, the RK62, is the rifle that the Finns adopt for, adopted for their military service. And a version of that rifle continues on in military service to this day, I believe. But anyway, this little 5.56 guy was pretty popular here on the, the US market. If I remember right, there's this old movie called The Survivors with um, Robin Williams. Uh, I believe one of the actors actually had a Valmet in the movie. These guns date back to the 80s, remind me of my youth because they were fairly popular and affordable back then. These days, they're extremely hard to find and expensive, just like their magazines. So this one is the 5.56 version. So the action of the rifle that I'm holding here is very similar to the action that is in the M82 bullpup. This one does feature a side folding stock, if I can hit the button, and it's not a very good design. Uh, it's, it's, the whole gun is kind of really rather cheap looking, but it's still considered to be one of the higher end AKs out there. The stock on this thing has this rubber coating over it, and it's just a piece of steel, tube steel, with this you know, heat, uh, butt plate kind of bent and welded to it. There's a button on the back end of it, you kind of push really hard, and it's a little hinge, but it doesn't lock up very tight. The Galil stock is a vast improvement over what the Fins came up with for the uh, M76 series of rifles. But other than that, it's just a standard AK. Now the finish on the guns is really, really nice. Uh, the hand guards are nice because they're one piece. And when I show you my early RK62, 
you'll see that it has what ha we call the old cheese grater hand guards, and it didn't have any type of heat protection from the gas tube up here. So this version does, so you can grab the rifle like this, and you're not going to burn your hand as easily as you would the, uh, the earlier versions of the rifle in 7.62 by 39. All right, so let's fire off 30 rounds out of this bad boy and get back to shooting the bullpup. All right, and there you go. Yes, that's electrical tape on the side of the dust cover there. That's where it throws the spent cases back, and I am just trying to protect my investment. These are uh, rather expensive guns these days. Not so much in the 80s, but today's these things command a premium price when you see them pop up on places like GunBroker. We just recently posted a video about the Caracal EF pistols, and we had some problems with the handgun using American Eagle 124 grain ball. And so we thought it would be a good idea to come out and test the handguns with some different ammunition. So we chose some Fiocchi 124 grain, which is the ammunition we use in our reliability tests. And if you watch those videos, including the 1,000 rounds fired in 14 minute videos, you'll know that the Fiocchi is very reliable ammunition. We did something a little bit differently this time though. We brought the guns out and we brought a laptop computer and we live streamed our testing of the Fiocchi ammunition in the Caracal pistols. And that content is exclusively for our Patreons. If you'd like to become a patron supporter of the Military Arms Channel, there is a link down below, and you can find out if the problems persist with the Fiocchi ammunition. The M82 is pretty much like every other AK bullpup I've ever come across, either ones that were built by the factory, like the Fins built this model M82, or the Norinco 86S, and even third parties that have built chassis for AK actions to turn them into bullpups. I find that the bullpup action, just in general, makes for a cruddy bullpup. And the M82 is no different, but it's interesting to see how different companies and different third parties try to come up with solutions to making the AK function as a bullpup. And we're gonna go over, as we field strip this gun, some of the quirky little things that the Fins did to make this more practical, but still, it's really a pretty bad hack of a, a job. So anyway, let's field strip it and talk about some of the components of the rifle and how it's a little bit different than other attempts. All right, so to clear the weapon, it's just like an AK. This is just a standard Valmet magazine release, push forward on it. It's a rock and locker, and that $400 magazine pops right out of there. Now you can also notice you'll see some nit nicks and dings here on the side of the stock where the spent cases are coming back, chipping away at this rather fragile, easily chipped and cracked stock. Now we're gonna make sure that the bolt uh, can travel rearward by taking the safety off so we can then check the chamber and the chamber is clear. Now it's like stripping pretty much any other AK, with the exception that the fins, much like the Israelis, made their top covers fit extremely tightly. That's because the fins, just like the Israelis on their rifle variations, non-bullpups, mount their rear sight to the top cover. So that top cover has got to have very, very tight fitment, and that, that fitment has carried over into this bullpup action. So here on the top we have a little polymer piece that's riveted to the top cover. This is a heat shield for your cheek to rest upon, just a shield in general, and it's scalloped out right here where my index finger is. This gun will make you cuss. It may even make you invent cuss words, but just like a standard AK, you have this little tongue or tab that sticks out here in the rear. You're gonna push forward on that using that lever or the leverage of that slight cutout, just kind of wiggle the top cover loose and 
I'm actually going to try to do it from this angle, guys, because this is not easy to do. So I'm going to try to pry up on it from here while pushing in on the tab. And there we go. Finally pried that thing off, okay? Yes, it's that hard. All right, you're not going to want to do that more than once or twice in a day. Now inside, we can see that it's pretty much just a standard AK. And the fins made a pretty darn good AK action. They had commercial variants of the rifle, which showed poorer quality than they had military grade rifles, uh, which exhibited really good quality. Some of their commercial products like this thing, eh. But the action is solid. So it has a sheet metal receiver inside there, a non-captive recoil spring. Pull the bolt back, pops out just like an AK. You'll notice that the gas tube's wanting to slide off. I'm going to pull this back. You have very little clearances here. And you take your gas tube off. It doesn't lock in like a Russian AK design. It just slides in on a dovetail. And then you have your bolt and carrier, which looks just like pretty much any other Valmet type design. And of course, it's just a straight up AK. So looking inside the gun, you can see it's literally an AK receiver and barrel just stuck into this really bad polymer slash, I almost want to say it's, it's, it's kind of like a fiberglass. Now, I don't know if you can see this, we'll try to get a picture of it, but these guns are notorious for breaking their stocks or cracking their stocks with use. As they age, this, this material they've made the stocks out of becomes even more brittle and finding one that's not been fired that has no cracks in the stock is challenging. That's why I have two of these rifles. This one I shoot. I have a pristine example that hasn't been fired so there's no visible cracks in the stock. But I've heard reports of people having them and never having fired them and they're just dry rotting and cracking. But this one has a crack that runs pretty much all the way down the rear area here. Now, there is a big screw that comes through the back that screws into the receiver and draws it up tight against the fiberglass, and then in the front, we're not going to take the chassis out of the stock, or take the AK action out of the stock, but then here in the front we have a retainer that has a jam nut and another nut. So what we would do to get this out is unscrew these nuts so I can take the front handguard retainer off, move it forward, and then in the rear I would take this screw out and I could lift the action out of the stock. The more you do that, the more likely you are to damage your stock, and the stocks are not easily found. I do have a spare stock just in case, but um, yeah, that's just because I'm a collector and I do want to shoot these things, and so this is my shooter. So inside again, just a standard one mil thick stamped receiver. It's a pretty much a standard M76 rifle, just crammed into the action. Now, if you look at it this way, you'll notice how the sight arrangement is. Because the entire chassis is covered, or the entire action, I should say, is covered by the chassis, you have the manufacturer's markings on the rear sight post. You'll notice how the rear sight and the front sight are offset. And that's one of the many reasons why this is a right-handed shooter-only gun. That's because the sights are offset so that I can easily see them why, well, you know, being a right-handed shooter, if I'm a left-handed shooter and I come over here, now I have the bolt handle hitting me in the face and I'd have no practical way to get a proper sight picture. So this really is meant for the right-handed population. So you have the manufacturer's markings on both sides of the rear sight tower. And then here in the front, you can see uh, how they've managed to pin this awkward device on the front, which is your front sight post. Now this is adjustable for elevation and the rear is adjustable for windage. There's just like a little dovetail in there and there's a screw on the bottom, the flat head, and you can loosen it and slide this left and right for your windage adjustment. So that's how the sights work on the gun. Now of course, being an AK, you have this gas system up here that's a problem. The problem primarily being that it gets hot. So what they did, I'm going to put the gas tube back on here. It just kind of slides into place. Such an awkward little gun. So when the gas tube's in place, you can see it has this polymer heat shield here that's also ventilated. All right, so that's how you're not going to, well, 
if you shoot the gun enough, it's going to have problems, but this is how you would keep from burning yourself if you put five or six magazines through it. I highly recommend not doing that to these. Uh, they don't handle heat very well, so this isn't a gun you're going to go out and just blast a thousand rounds through in an afternoon. Maybe it was in the 80s when they were dirt cheap and replaceable. Today, given their value on the collector's market, that's not something you're going to want to do with this rifle. So to put it back together, first of all, it's just like the Valmet or the Galil. You see how it just the, the gas tube is held in place just by two slots on either side. I'm going to go ahead and lay the action down. Have the rifle down, pick up the bolt carrier here and put it together and it's just like a standard AK. All right. And once I have that assembled, I'm going to set the rifle upright, slide the piston in. You have very close tolerances because and sometimes really it makes it a little, little easier if you do it this way because the gas piston is, is shaped in such a way and fits so tightly in its tube that you have very little room to maneuver to get the bolt and carrier to slide in. So let's see if we can get these two to go together here. Did I mention this gun will make you invent cuss words? I think I did mention that. All right, there we go. All right. Get in there, all right. Very tight fit. And now you just push the bolt carrier down, push it forward, and there you go. All right, now take your floppy spring that's non-captive, slide it in, and hold on to it tightly because if you let go, it will go sailing. The Russian design is definitely better in that regard. Okay, so then you put it on its perch just like that. And to put it together, you're going to have to come around over here and watch how I do this. So the top cover keeps the gas tube in place they interface just like that right there. They, they kind of fit together. So it's just the pressure of the top cover that keeps the gas tube from backing out. So you have to fit that in the front and then take your top cover, bring it down here in the back, apply downward pressure, kind of start the assembly together. And then once you get it to a certain point, I'm just going to hit it with the palm of my hand and kind of a forward downward blow. And it should go together, but sometimes <laughs> it doesn't. All right, I'll try it one more time. There we go. All right, super simple. Imagine doing that in the field. And uh, yeah, Wikipedia says that these were uh, used in military trials by the Finnish paratroopers, and I find that rather hard to believe, just how goofy and chintzy this whole design is. Um, yeah, I can't imagine them doing that. So there you go, guys. That's how you would field strip the M82. Uh, this is how it mitigates heat with the, uh, the gas tube. You can see the sights are offset, has a very rudimentary muzzle device on it, flash hider, and then you have this cheek rest over here. Other than that, this thing is a straight up AK. You have something of a forward assist like you would with any AK by being able to force the bolt closed and then your very rudimentary safety controls. That's it. Such a goofy little rifle, but that kind of endears me to it. I like goofy little weird things from the 80s. And this qualifies. When using 30 round magazines with M82, beer canning the magazine can be a little bit difficult because of the location of the pistol grip. You have to rock this in like an AK, so the toe goes in first. You kind of got to rock it back. And your fingers hitting that pistol grip can make that task a little bit difficult. Not impossible, but difficult. What I found with M82 is if I hold the magazine like this, I can very easily find that front index point and rock the magazine in where it should be much more easily than if I try to beer can it. <laughs> Had a little bit of a trigger reset issue there. Huh, yeah, so we have noticed that when shooting this thing every once in a while, the, uh, the trigger bar gets kind of hung up and you get kind of a weird trigger reset issue and I, that just happened when I was trying to do my mag dump there. Again, a quirky oddity, not something I would want as an infantry rifle by any means.
I hope you guys enjoyed coming out and taking a look at this oddity from the 80s. It's one of those weird rifles that I love. It's uh, not exactly a practical rifle, but it doesn't have to be practical for me to love it. Matter of fact, the more oddball it is, the higher the chance is I'm probably going to fall in love with it and want to add it to my collection. So there you have it, guys, the M82 Bullpup. And uh, if you read up on it on Wikipedia, you're going to read a whole bunch of information about it. How much of that is actually true, I don't know. It's Wikipedia. Like I said, <laughs> they said that their paratroopers tried to use these, and I just can't see them taking this gun seriously. In my view, this thing was for export only, and even then, it's a quirky little mess. Guys, this is our 10th year of doing the Military Arms Channel. We appreciate your support all those years. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, please do that. There's a link down below. Also, swing by and check us out at Copper Custom, which is our online store. We have a lot of great products at great prices. And also, you know, YouTube does not necessarily like gun channels or conservative speech, so a lot of folks are finding new homes over on Full30.com. Again, that's Full30.com. You can find us over there, along with a lot of your top firearms content creators. Guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for all those years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon.